Hi, my name is Daniel Feinberg, and I'm the online learning librarian at UNF's Thomas G. Carpenter Library. Today we're going to talk about scholarship as a conversation. Scholarship as a conversation is defined by the Association of College and Research Libraries as a community of scholars, researchers, or professionals engaging in sustained discourse with new insights and discoveries occurring over time as a result of varied perspectives and interpretations. When we're talking about scholarship as a conversation, we're discussing how to find research and using research in a way that creates a conversation between individuals, be it researchers, students, or individuals. But what is scholarship? It could be money that's granted in order to pay for, for student schooling. It could be activities or achievements or experts in a discipline typically thought of as the process of an expert in a specific field. Or lastly, it's serious study or research of a topic. This is the whole idea and premise that when we look for research and information, we're looking for the scholarly or authoritative and valid ideas. There are three parts of scholarship. The sharing of knowledge of information or dissemination of knowledge, scholarly communication, or as this presentation is mainly focused upon, scholarship as a conversation. Speaking more specifically, looking at conversations of experts or conversations of students learning from experts. And I think that's the one important role that we have to consider. As students in a university, you're going beyond and above the basic idea of learning information and regurgitating it. Rather, you're becoming part of the conversation that scholars are having. As a student, what comes to your mind when you think about scholarship as a conversation? I spoke with a student about this topic, and here are some of the ideas that she came up with. A community of scholars, students, faculty, experts, doctors, exploration of ideas or concepts without bias, freedom of thought, a basis for knowledge, or an open forum. Many of these ideas can be thought of together or even as a part. But the big thing that you want to think about is when you're going through a college course or taking a, writing a paper or taking a class, you are becoming part of a scholarship and you're be, becoming a part of scholarship as a conversation. Because it is not just an idea that you're learning, but the idea that you're forming. And that in itself becomes part of that conversation that goes on with experts in the field. What does it mean to have a conversation? A conversation is a formulated, debated, or you could be weighed in. When one is reading scholarly materials, such as journal articles, uh, ebooks, a book, uh, a, a magazine article, you're critically thinking, critically evaluating, and building content. You're seeking out a clear answer for your information. And this is a really important thing to consider. When you're reading an article, you are critically evaluating it and critically thinking about it. Therefore, you're building your own knowledge base. And then when you're writing your paper or coming up with your own ideas, you are building content that, that was already been built upon. So now we're going to watch a Powtoon to learn more about scholarship as a conversation. Thank you very much. Part one, sharing knowledge and information. How do we learn stuff? Someone shares their knowledge with us. That sharing could be done by a teacher or professor at school who gave a lecture or asked you to participate in an activity. You could read a book or an article about something and now you know about it because the author shared that information with you. I might watch someone show me a process on video so that I can practice it myself, or see an event take place in real life, or on video. You could listen to someone tell a story or give a speech. And now you also have this information and you can share it with others. 
You could teach your friend how to tie a necktie, explain quantum physics to your roommate, or describe a scene from a work of literature for a classmate. No doubt you have been asked to share your knowledge, that information you've gathered from readings, experiences, lectures, activities, or videos like this one, whether formally in a paper or presentation for class, or informally among family and friends. Of course, this will continue as you pro progress toward your degree and in your work life too. Sometimes these requests are simply, tell me what you know. But often, and especially in college courses, we are asked to share what we know and also add something to it. Maybe it's your opinion or point of view on a controversial issue or current event. Perhaps you'll be asked to compare, summarize, or interpret information. Or maybe you'll need to review information on a topic and make suggestions or predictions, or even present a new theory based on what you've learned. Part two, scholarly communication. What is that? The Association of College and Research Libraries defines scholarly communication as the system through which research and other scholarly writings are created, evaluated for quality, disseminated to the scholarly community, and preserved for future use. So basically, how scholarship gets put out there from one scholar to all the rest. Knowledge from studying in an academic subject or field, such as psychology, engineering, French literature, or American history, to name a few, can be shared in a variety of ways. Traditionally, there have been books and scholarly journals in which scholars and researchers could publish their work. All that gets to the definition that we just had. And other scholars and researchers would find it, read, understand, and interpret this information to inform their own research. Scholars often use that previous knowledge and build on it. We'll come back to that part in part three. Just so we're on the same page, scholars can refer to professors or researchers at universities or companies, but it can also refer to students. Each of us can be a scholar of any field or topic for school or personal enrichment. Whether it's learning a new skill for your hobby or writing a paper on the Spanish Inquisition after Columbus found America, you are a scholar. And while you may not have grand plans to publish your work just yet, you still produce scholarly materials, especially if we're talking about schoolwork. Back to scholarly communication. Besides books and journals, there are professional organizations that host conferences where scholars can present their work to groups of other people in their fields. But this communication of scholarly information may also occur through informal channels. Some scholars communicate directly with each other in person, through letters, email, or by other means, and others only know each other through the articles or books they've read. Even blogs and Twitter can play a role in scholarly communication. All of this communication can be viewed as a conversation and it happens in every subject. Part three, scholarship as a conversation. So how is scholarship a conversation? Well, first let's define conversation. Most definitions include some reference to informality or speech, but I think we can all agree that there can be a conversation without spoken words. Another thing that the definitions have in common is the notion that a conversation is a discussion or exchange of ideas. In reality, conversations can be formal or informal just like the definition of scholarly communication. The more formal ways of communicating scholarly stuff, remember that's books, peer-reviewed journal articles and presentations, are still relevant 
and they're not going away, even if they've moved to electronic and online formats. They are a form of conversation in text, orally, and sometimes in images, in poster presentations or documentary films. Remember this from part two, scholars and researchers find previously written knowledge or information, they read, understand, and interpret it to form their own research. Scholars often use that previous knowledge and build on it. That's where the scholar or researcher begins to participate in a conversation. A common way to explain this concept is the crowded room or party scenario. So you walk into a room where there's already a small groups of people talking to each other on various topics. You'd like to join in, but you aren't sure what the group next to you is talking about. So you stand there for a bit. You quietly listen, absorbing the vibe of the group and taking in the points everyone makes based on their own knowledge and experience. Once confident that you know what's going on and have something to contribute, you decide to speak. You might summarize or rephrase what has already been said in order to make it clear as to why your own idea has relevance at that point in the conversation. People in the group nod along, disagree, ask questions, and bring up new ideas based on what you said, just as you had done. Someone new joins the group and the conversation cycle continues. Scholars do the same thing when researching a topic or problem. We figure out what we want to talk about and then we get all the relevant information on that topic. We digest it and figure out where our ideas fit in. Often, our ideas will build on a fact someone else discovered or an idea that a colleague had. Or we may disagree with someone's theory and provide evidence for why we see things differently. Either way, it's necessary to present the current state of things and let the reader or audience know where our idea fits into the existing conversation and why it's relevant. We print, post, present, or otherwise distribute our work, and someone else comes along later to do the same. The conversation continues in new and interesting directions. It may not be direct person-to-person -person conversation, but it is indeed an exchange of ideas. One way scholars help each other to join a conversation is by acknowledging those discoveries and ideas that came before theirs. How do they do that? You guessed it, citations. Acknowledging the work of others is a big part of the scholarly conversation. You review the existing scholarship or literature on your cool topic will also help anyone with a similar cool topic, learn about the background the two topics share. How do you engage in the scholarly conversation? You, as the student scholar, contribute to scholarly conversations whenever you produce some sort of work for a class. Your class is like that group of people chatting at the party. Sometimes your professor sees your, only your professor sees your contributed ideas. Sometimes everyone in class will participate in the same conversation together. You could even join the informal discussion with professional scholars and researchers by following certain hashtags or people on social media. The conversation happens there too. Before you write that paper or start putting together slides, you have to jump into the existing scholarly conversation. Where you jump and how you jump in depends on the assignment specifications from your professor or perhaps the subject matter. You may need to look at only peer-reviewed articles published in prestigious scholarly journals. You may use only the course texts and your own thoughts. Or perhaps it will be something else entirely. Either way, your, your process of gathering information, mulling it over, determining where your ideas fit in, and acknowledging the work that came before yours will be the same. And that is how scholarship 
is a conversation. So now that you've gotten a, a good idea and feel for what scholarship as a conversation is, consider it the next time you're sitting in your class. When a professor lectures, you're really taking in and critically evaluating the ideas that they're coming up with. But even more so, you're forming your own. So that when you write that next paper, or go to a librarian to help find articles, or an ebook or a textbook, the reality is you're building on that conversation and making a large impact in your learning and others who read your work. If you have any questions, feel free to contact a research librarian. We're all very willing to have, give you help and have conversations with you about topics that you may have come upon. I hope you learned something today and benefit from this scholarship. Thank you very much.